Four of the six candidates selected by officials to run in Iran's special presidential election are still in the running after the president died in a helicopter crash last month. A cardiac surgeon, a former mayor of Tehran, and a cleric implicated in the execution of political prisoners are among the six candidates approved by officials to run in Iran's election on Friday to replace the president who died in a helicopter crash last month. The candidates have renounced Iran's hijab enforcement. They've addressed American sanctions that have contributed to the country's flailing economy and openly criticized the government during a series of debates, an unusual move in Iranian politics. Still, voter apathy in the country is high, and divisions among conservative leaders make predicting the outcome difficult. Though Iran's supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, has ultimate authority over key state matters, the president sets domestic policy and can influence foreign policy. Iran's Guardian Council, a committee of 12 jurists and clerics, whittled an initial list of 80 presidential candidates down to six, disqualifying seven women and a former president and many other government officials. For candidates are still in the race. Two of the candidates, Amir Hossein Gazazada Hashemi and Ali Reza Zakani, dropped out of the race to consolidate the conservative vote. If no candidate wins a majority on Friday, a runoff election will be held on July 5th between the top two winners. The latest polls, published by the conservative, government-run Imam Sadiq University earlier this week showed Dr. Masood Pazeshkian leading with approximately 24.4% of votes, Mohammed Bakr Galabaf at 23.4% and Saeed Jalalai at 21.5%. The other candidates each had less than 5% of the vote, and nearly a fifth of voters were undecided. The election comes at a time of high regional tensions between Iran and Israel and the United States. More than 61.5 million Iranians aged over 18 have been given a chance to vote for a new president and send a message to the regime about the state of the economy. However, millions are expected to boycott the election on Friday, the outcome of which they believe will be manipulated by the regime to ensure a loyalist victory. Iran's leaders want to renew their legitimacy after a steady decline in turnout reached a crisis point last year with fewer than 41% voting in parliamentary elections and fewer than 10% in the capital, Tehran. The vote comes after President Ebrahim Raisi died in a helicopter crash in May. The two conservative frontrunners, Saeed Jalalai, a former nuclear negotiator with little or no administrative experience, and Mohammad Bagar Kalabaf, the Speaker of the Parliament, failed to agree to a pre-polling day pact that would see one of them stand aside. That failure opens the door to the possibility that the sole reformist candidate permitted to stand, 69-year-old heart surgeon Masoud Pazeshkian, will make it to a two-person runoff. Such a runoff is required if none of the four candidates in the race reach 50% in the first round. Jalalai, an opponent of the 2015 nuclear deal, believes Iran can withstand Western sanctions by building economic ties to the East. He is also the most ideological about using the powers of the state to enforce the hijab on Iranian women and has the support of the Front of Islamic Revolution Stability, or Jeb Paydari, a group that has fallen out with Kalabaf. Kalabaf has said he is willing to negotiate on reviving the nuclear deal and regards stronger management of the economy as the route to growth. At the 11th hour, Jalalai was still pressing Kalabaf to stand down, saying Kalabaf's sacrifice may be the only way to stop Pazeshkian and what will effectively be the third term of Hassan Rouhani, the centrist whose two-term presidency ended in failure in 2021, largely due to the U.S. pulling out of the nuclear deal. The poll is a huge test of the reformists' continued relevance in Iranian politics. The regime has tried to weaken Pazeshkian's bid, including banning one of his final rallies. The Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, gave a speech on the eve of the vote condemning certain Iranian politicians for believing all paths to progress pass through the United States, remarks clearly aimed at Pazeshkian's call to end Iran's economic isolation from the West. At the last minute, two of the five conservative candidates permitted to stand by the Guardian Council, Amir Hossein Gazazada Hashemi, a supporter of Razi, and Ali Reza Zakani, the mayor of Tehran, stood aside confirming reformist accusations that they had been front candidates for Jalalai. Many Iranians, disillusioned by successive crackdowns, questioned the value of the democratic process and planned to stay away rather than lend the process a veneer of legitimacy. One member of Generation Z told The Guardian, with its killings, the regime has made the issue of not voting one of personal dignity. Both Pazeshkian and the Supreme Leader won a high turnout, 
closer to 60%, but for different motives. Pazeshkian needs to persuade a depoliticized society to come out to defeat the 15 million or so supporters of the regime. The Supreme Leader has argued, high turnout brings honor to the Islamic Republic. Every election with low participation gives our enemies reason to criticize us. We must not give them that satisfaction. It is also questionable whether the allies of the Supreme Leader, given his views about America and cultural values, would tolerate a Pazeshkian presidency. Pazeshkian, for his part, has repeatedly stressed he will accept Khamenei's authority and insisted that obedience will not prevent him from changing Iran. A new paper by United Against a Nuclear Iran, a U.S. pressure group, argues the level of electoral manipulation by the regime goes far wider than simply doctoring the list of eligible candidates. The report highlights the role of the Bakiatala Cultural and Social Headquarters, which the report says has created a full apparatus and strategy to engineer political and cultural outcomes in Iran.